Hi, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the older child, about the end of second grade, beginning of third grade, who is struggling with sizing of, of letters and spacing between words and letters. So as the progression goes, kids learn how to form the letters and then they are writing the letters and spacing the letters on lines and working between words on with sentences as well. So as you can imagine, reading is a huge skill that is super important that they get that visual of spacing between words and letters. So that will help. So read to your children a lot. Also understanding letters automatically, how to form them, what the sequence of the alphabet is, will help gain speed and accuracy with writing. So assuming that all of those foundation skills are there, we're going to be talking about some ideas. I have 10 different ideas on how to improve the sizing and spacing of letters for legibility in writing. So here goes. My first idea is to use smaller spaces. So I use college ruled paper because what I find is if I give them bigger spaces, they use them. It's kind of like a closet. If you have a closet, you fill it up. But if you have a smaller closet, you figure out how to organize so that you can fit the same amount of items in there, but just in a more organized fashion. So that's my first tip. Use college ruled paper because it's smaller. My second tip is highlighted. So I use highlighting a lot for the little guys because they trace with inside my lines. But here's an example of using college ruled paper, single lined and doubled lined. So this is for the younger student and this is for the older student. So I have highlighters and I typically have more than one because I like them to make choices because they feel like they have some control. But I have a thin lined one and then I have a um, the traditional thicker lined ones. So highlighting is my first idea. My second idea is I just give a visual cue. I darken the line and give a visual cue for where what space I want them to write in. So this is the single line and this is the double line. And for the double line, you can see that I added a red line in there. Now there are some papers that you can buy commercially, but if you are working on the fly, you can just go ahead and do it yourself. The next thing I like is graph paper. And if you don't have graph paper, you can make your own graph paper. So I do individual boxes, and here is the double lined, so the word dog, and this is for the single. So it gives them cues that the D is a tall word and the G or a letter, and that the G is a long and below the line letter. So you can do individual boxes. You can do word boxes, and this will also give them the visual cue. You're not exactly telling them, it's not individualized as in the first one, but it's just the whole word so they know where the letters fit. Number three is the word box without the visual cue that some letters are long and some letters are tall, like the J and the F in this one. And then the last idea are sentence boxes. So I'm going to add the spacing in there for them and they're, I'm giving them a cue of how long the word needs to be, that they can only write their word this long. So that is my next idea. So next, I, this is one of my favorites actually, I do little individual word pieces of paper and I see if they can fit the word in there and then if we can trim the paper even more until they get to the point that they can write their own or they can cut their own boxes. So my dog loves to bark. So we work on spacing that way. And this is really fun. The kids really like that a lot. And it's hard to write outside like as opposed to this one, if I run outside of the box, I just run outside of the box. But in this one, if I run outside of the paper, I'm no, it's no longer visible. So I like that one a lot. My next one is you can use your finger. You can use your finger, you can use a pen, you can use a crayon, you can use a stick, anything that will put their space in between. So as they're writing, they write the word, your finger goes there, you write the next word, finger and so on and so forth. Sometimes I double space with this college ruled paper because it helps legibility. And sometimes I will vi give visual cues on what lines we're going to use. What I found is 
when I put red X's on the opposite line, the ones that we're not going to use, is that it just gets visually confusing. So I typically only go with the positive. These are the lines that we're going to write on. So I like that idea a lot. My next idea is kids like to use pens. They like to use pens because they think that they are um, all grown up. And it's fun for me because I can use a fine tipped pen, which I like a lot, but also the kids can't erase. So they naturally go slower because if they don't, they have to start over and that is not fun for them. So I like pens and I like mechanical pencils. And I like mechanical pencils rather than the number two is because they're super thin and helps them write um, smaller and stay within the boxes. So. That is my next idea. And then this is actually my favorite, is where I just turn the paper sideways. So it already has natural spacing. And you can see I wrote the alphabet on top. And then I took a ruler and I wrote some lines for sentences. And I put a natural space in between each word. So I, I like this a lot. The kids, it's easy for them to understand that there needs to be spacing in between each word. So there's that. And then lastly, I use that same technique for math. A lot of times my teachers tell me that the kids aren't doing the math correctly because they aren't lining it up right. So if they need a box to stay inside of, I can do that easily. So if it looks like this, they know how to do it, but they can only write one number in each slot. And this helps with the place values as well. So I am praying that this really helps you and your children learn how to write with inside boxes and space more consistently for legibility. Thanks. Have fun. Stay safe. Wash your hands.